All right, with this evening weather briefing for Labor Day Monday, September the 4th, and this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you all had a great Labor Day holiday weekend. I have to say that the weather has been just gorgeous in the last few days, including today right here in Central Florida. And I expect this uh, gorgeous weather, uh, weather to continue as we head into your Tuesday, but there'll be some changes on the way as we head towards mid to late week, and that is the return of the sizzling, sizzling heat. So I'll have more details on that here in just a little bit, along with an update on the tropics. But let's go ahead and take a look at the high temperatures we had seen today across central Florida. And before I get to that, let's get a shout out this evening from Gloria Hanrahan who is uh, in the house. Good to have you, ma'am. All righty, so temperatures uh, earlier today across central Florida did reach at around 90 here in Orlando. Uh, looks like we did see a high temperature of 91 in Kissimmee, 85 for Winter Haven, perhaps 90 degree temperatures up here towards the Ocala in the Villages areas with some upper 80s in Sanford and farther towards the East Lawn Interstate 95 between Palm Coast stretching down south into uh, Melbourne. So yeah, temperatures have ran uh, mostly just around average, which, which is where we should be for this time of year because we haven't seen that uh, pretty much uh, earlier in the summer, but at least we got to see that uh, this Labor Day holiday weekend, including uh, today. Now I have to say that the uh, dew point temperatures have uh, been mostly sitting in a comfortable category today. We've been running between the upper 60s to around at or close to 70. Not the actual temperature, but that's the, that's the dew point temperatures I'm talking about. And I believe we'll see that again as we head into your Tuesday before we see the dew point temperatures increase along with the heat by mid to late week. All righty, so here's a look at the uh, current temperatures right now at this 8 o'clock hour. And as you can see, it is still looking mild out there. So we have uh, mostly across central Florida in the low to mid 80s, but some spots like over in Titusville. Kissimmee and Winter Haven are mostly sitting in the upper 80s at this 8 o'clock hour, too. And I uh, have to say that the weather's going to stay pretty calm as we head to the rest of this evening. So if you have any plans outdoors, uh, you'll, be, you'll be in luck to uh, at least to uh, get out and enjoy. Okie dokie. So let's go ahead and... Uh, take a look at Futurecast and show you um, how... Uh, I guess you can say how warm the temperatures are going to be as we head into your Tuesday and how hot it will get as we head into midweek. But before we do that, folks, if you're just coming on in, <coughs> excuse me, if you're coming on, coming on into this live Facebook feed on this uh, Monday night, please do feel free as always to go ahead and share this with your friends, families, followers, etc. And you know my motto, and that is uh, sharing is caring. Before we also move on to uh, future cast, I'm going to go ahead and share this live uh, Facebook feed to several of the uh, Facebook group pages. So if you can give me just about the next uh, few minutes or so, then we'll we'll move on. All right, uh, sorry about that again, folks. All righty, so here is a look at Futurecast. So as we head into the overnight and into daybreak Tuesday morning, it looks like we'll start off with lows for some of you starting off in the upper 60s. So if you live in places like Winter Haven and Ocala, you may see some upper 60s to start off uh, our Tuesday. It's a little cooler uh, to begin off that morning. Which, which means we may, we may see a little bit of a taste of some fall-like weather uh, for the morning hours. Could be a good morning for a jog as well. While other areas will deal with low temperatures in the low 70s, but at least the weather will be dry for your morning commute as, you, as most of you head back to work and as the kids head to the bus stop 
back to school after the long three day three day holiday weekend. Day into the afternoon, we'll see temperatures once again, just like we had seen today and over the holiday weekend, running around average, uh, which is between the upper 80s and into the low, <clears throat> excuse me, into the low 90s with uh, plenty of sunshine. And then as we head towards the evening, it looks like we'll see temperatures uh, go down from between, we'll say the upper 70s and into the low 80s, but still not quite uh, too shabby at all. Uh, for those of you that may have plans uh, going on outdoors uh, around that time. And then as we head into the overnight, late Tuesday and into early Wednesday morning, once again, some of you will start off with lows in the 60s, like right up here towards Ocala. Uh, the villages, Daytona Beach and Palm Coast, while others will see lows uh, starting off in the low 70s as we head into uh, 7 a.m. Wednesday morning. Heading into the afternoon, like I mentioned just, just a, a few minutes a few minutes ago, the heat will start to uh, come back. We're talking about temperatures getting back into the mid-90s as we head into Wednesday. So like right here in the metro Orlando area, we may end up seeing a high temperature of 95. Still can see temperatures around 90 for both Sanford and Kissimmee, uh, 91 for the Villages and Ocala, and perhaps some upper 80s right along Interstate 95 uh, from Flackler stretching down south into Brevard counties, and perhaps a high of 89 also on Wednesday for Winter Haven. But, but just note that just note that the uh, humidity humidity levels by Wednesday afternoon will again increase. Uh, back into a into the mugginess category, you can say. So just uh, keep that in mind. Now, taking you to your Wednesday evening at 8 p.m., it shows that temperatures will start to be going down a little cooler, but still looking pretty mild, with mostly uh, the temps ranging between the upper 70s and into the low, perhaps some in the mid 80s. And then as the clock continues all the way towards the overnight portion of late Wednesday night and into early Thursday morning, We'll end up seeing lows getting back to where we were before, which is mainly starting off a little bit muggy in the low to mid 70s. So there you have it there. And uh, I also do want to mention that if you hit it, if you're if you're planning on going to the beach tomorrow, uh, just note that uh, for coastal places like Flagler, Volusia and down towards Brevard counties, there are some rip current statements uh, in effect. Uh, as of right now, it looks like the Weather Service will remain or will continue rather to have that uh, statement, statement remain through 4 a.m. in the morning. But that could extend as we head towards today tomorrow because of this north because of the northeasterly winds coming in from the northeast, pushing to the southwest along the eastern coast of Florida. That's going to cause, you know, the potential for dangerous rip currents. So, again, the best thing to do if you're going to be swimming in the on the Atlantic waters, uh, I recommend uh, swimming where near the lifeguards are, because if you swim away from the lifeguards, you can you can catch yourself into a dangerous situation. So please do the right thing if, while you can if you're heading again to the beach uh, on your Tuesday. All right, so the next thing we'll go ahead and take a look at is the tropics, and yet it is still looking pretty active out there uh, this evening. So let me go ahead and turn on the uh, tropical uh, satellite. And also uh, turn on the spaghetti models because we're watching uh, Invest 95. That continues to brew out in the Atlantic this evening. And this is and this is right here. Uh, and according to the National Hurricane Center, they have given, given about a 100% chance for likely up development in the next several days as this continues to move uh, farther west and perhaps a little bit northwest where you can tell by these uh, tracks here, we'll say at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. So that storm, so that storm run over here is going a little bit faster, just like what we, just like what we had to deal with uh, Edalia when it hit parts of the big band of Florida a week ago. But some of the models are indicating, you know, that this may make, this may take it to a right turn to the north by the time we get into, I believe this weekend and maybe as early as next week uh, into the western side of the Atlantic. But it's too early to say if this will be an, an issue for the eastern side of the United States as far as making landfall uh, goes. But some of the models are indicating that this will not be an issue for Florida. But just note that models can still change as we get closer or once the uh, 
potential storm, I should say, gets closer to the United States. So just uh, keep that in mind. So always keep checking back with me here on social media and perhaps right here on Facebook Live for any new potential updates and changes that could be made. But the models are also indicating that this, this could likely become into a tropical storm and maybe perhaps as high as a Cat 1, maybe perhaps a 2 hurricane in the next several days. And if it does, which I'm sure it will, the next thing, the next name on the list will be a uh, tropical storm and perhaps pretty soon be naming Hurricane Lee. So that's the next name storm on the list. So, so that's the latest there on Invest 95. And then, of course, we got uh, another uh, tropical wave that is also brewing out in the out of the west coast of Africa. It looks and it looks like it's moving also due west northwest in the next several days, where which is where the National Hurricane Center has given about a 40 to a 50 percent chance for development uh, as well. So something to watch closely. But there is one named storm that is out there in the Atlantic. Well, it's not a tropical storm. It's actually a tropical depression. And uh, I believe we got the remnants of tropical storm Katia that is out in the Atlantic uh, this evening. And it continues to move very slow due to the Northwest at two miles an hour as winds continue to weaken as of, uh, as of uh, this hour or this evening rather at around 35 miles an hour. And then of course you got uh, tropical storm Gert that is still out there as well producing winds uh, a little, little bit uh, gusty at 52 miles an hour with about with about a uh, 1,001 millibar low, and that is moving due pretty quickly due to the north and northwest at, at around at least near the 30 miles an hour. But thankfully, though, none of these storms will be an impact for the U.S. in the coming days since they are weak since they are weakening. So. That's, that's the uh, latest there. And as you can see, the tropics elsewhere across the, let's say from the Caribbean and around the Gulf looks to be staying pretty quiet in the next several days. Uh, so let's hope that's the case. And I forgot to give a shout out this evening to Lorena Broda. Uh, I see that you're in the house this evening and hello to you. All righty. So let's go back in into uh, central Florida. Let me turn off the uh, tropical satellite here since we're pretty much done with uh, checking the tropics. Well, let's go ahead and sit back in closer to central Florida and we'll get a look at the radar because we have not done that at the beginning of this broadcast. And as you can see, things are looking smoothly quiet across central Florida. So I don't expect any rain or any storms to deal with here for the rest of this Labor Day evening. So. Like I've said before, if you got plans outdoors for the rest of tonight, you are good to go. All righty, so let's go ahead and take a look at the models tonight and see what's going to be happening as we head through the next couple of weeks. So we'll fast forward into uh, this, com this coming Thursday, which is the 7th of September. Yet the weather will still be looking dry across most of the state with maybe just a brief shower right down here into a uh, at least down near the Keys, but other than that, the rain chances will remain pretty low. Could be a it looks like there could be a, a pretty good a pretty good chance up here towards the both states of Alabama and Mississippi of scattered late day showers and storms by late week. And with that, <clears throat> like I mentioned before, temperatures will start to really heat things back into a sizzling. Uh, pattern with uh, mid to some spots climbing up into the upper 90s with heat index values possibly getting back as high as the triple digits. So again, this is why this uh, comfortable weather will not last much longer. So this is why you have this. This is why you have to you have to be ready for this uh, extreme heat to come back again as we head towards mid to late week. And it's not just for here in the state that we'll see temperatures uh, get to, get uh, sizzling hot on Thursday. But also that could be the case too if we go farther north into the lower portions of the uh, Mississippi Valley region. Ready, and as we head into Friday to uh, end the sec, or I should say, the first full week of September, 
shows that uh, yet again, Central Florida's weather will continue to stay mostly dry, but a brief shower or two can't be ruled out, especially if, especially if you live up here towards portions of Volusia and Flacco counties, but the rain chances yet again stays quite extremely low. Better, better chances of seeing any storms will be mostly staying up north across the lower portions of the Mississippi Valley region to end the week. And with that, we're talking about temperatures yet again, uh, <clears throat> still feeling much in the way of above average and above average pattern uh, with the temperatures ranging between the mid to upper 90s with the heat index values up as high as the triple digits. But it looks like there may be some slight relief of the extreme heat. I believe this may have I believe this may have to do with the weak cold front that will start to slide through portions of the valley by net or by this Friday uh, with temperatures slightly cooling off from the upper <clears throat> excuse me upper 90s down into the upper 80s and into the low 90s that's uh again I, I, again that's nice to uh, see a little bit of a relief of the extreme heat up in the valley thanks to some uh chances of rain and perhaps with a uh, possible front but it's unlikely that this front will come through florida uh at the end of the work week As we take you into the upcoming weekend, this will be for Saturday, September 9th, and it shows that a little bit of rain may start to make its way portions of uh, central Florida. If we, if it does, if, if, if that is the case, we could see about a 40% chance of seeing a few scattered late day showers and storms, which could impact your plans that you may have outdoors on Saturday. Uh, but uh, I don't think it's going to be a washout. So just, just note that if you have plans outdoors as we head towards the next coming weekend, that, uh, the, that some storms could pop up uh, in some spots, but it will not be a total washout. So I promise you that. But if you look up here towards the north in the Panhandle side of our state, up into near Savannah, Georgia, there could be a there could be a very, I guess you can say, a greater coverage of more showers and more showers and storms than it is for here in Central Florida. And with that, temperature wise, uh, temperature wise on Saturday looks to looks to turn out to be more of the same thing like we'll see for late week with the uh, numbers ranging between the mid to upper 90s. With the heat index values reaching as high as the triple digits. Looks like uh, the high temps up here towards the lower portions of the Mississippi Valley region will also be mostly remaining just a little cooler, but still pretty warm for close to this time of year with the uh, numbers ranging from the upper uh, upper 80s and into the mid 90s. All right, Lorena right. right, says so we'll not complain about the heat. She says the current temperature in Oxford is 72 and I have a flannel on. <laughs> All righty, here comes Sunday, September 10th. That's the next Sunday, and it looks like we'll see, again, a few more pop-up uh, hit or miss showers and storms. And again, if so, the rain chances may be around just, just around 40%, we'll say. Let's probably, if you go from Orange County and points north, that leaves most areas around the Mississippi Valley region looking dry heading into uh, Sunday. And with that, Big story. The other big story is the dangerous heat. So it looks like we may stay may may stay to be with us as we head into Sunday with temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 90s. With some spots, one surprise me hits at around at or close to 100 degrees. But of course, the 100 degree plus temperatures will, will just be the heat index values likely heading into Sunday, and perhaps the same thing over here towards I-10 for. Places like Pensacola, Panama City, Biloxi, stretching back towards the west of New Orleans. But again, for the rest of the Mississippi Valley region, temperatures looks to be mostly close to normal in the upper 80s to some spots in the low to mid 90s. So again, that's Sunday I'm talking about. Alrighty, heading into a week from today, that'll be for next Monday, September 11th, and it shows that the uh, rain chances continues to stay around normal at 40%, especially over here in the peninsula side of our state, leaving most areas in the, in the Mississippi Valley region looking uh, mainly dry. 
And once again, for temperatures, as we head towards the beginning of next week, will be mostly the same, uh, keeping things hotter in the mid to upper 90s with heat index values once again reaching as high as the triple digits. And that may also include for some areas up here towards the lower half of the uh, Mississippi Valley region too. And here is a week from tomorrow, next Tuesday, September 12th. And it shows that the storm chances we may end up seeing here across central Florida looks to stay again, almost the same, except, except it will be just a little bit lower at about we'll say 30 to 40 percent we'll call for now and that may be the, the same case too if we go farther north into the Mississippi Valley region Oops. and with that we're still talking yet another sizzling hot day po possibly for next Tuesday with temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 90s with heat index values reaching as high as the triple digits but look up here up to the northwest, it shows that there may be a, a potential of a stronger cold front that may start to slide through uh, the Mississippi Valley region. And if so, that really could allow temperatures to get uh, much cooler. So, so a little bit of taste of fall could be on the way for this area up here by next Tuesday, as the temperatures may end up dropping from the 90s down into the 60s, 70s, and 80s. That'll be nice for these folks to uh, get a little bit of a relief of the uh, of the summer heat but again i do highly doubt that this will be coming towards us uh because usually we don't we still don't see cold fronts, cold fronts come through uh our state in september so usually uh we don't usually we don't see cold fronts move through again uh across the deep southeast including here in florida especially as we head towards between the late october and early november time frame so so just understand that And yet the average chances of showers and storms may still continue heading into the middle of next week. That'll be for Wednesday, September 13th. And that may also be the case too up here if we go farther north into uh, eastern and south central Georgia and farther back towards the east into the Carolinas region. And with that, temperatures again looks to stay quite around uh, uh, pretty, much, pretty much the same like we'll be seeing here later this week. Uh, again, temperatures by next Wednesday may still remain in the mid to perhaps some spots in the upper 90s. But with this uh, much stronger front that will continue to slide farther a little bit southeast, that may allow temperatures behind it to uh, cool things down. Uh, this time, ranging between the upper 70s and into the mid 80s. So how about that for these folks up here in the valley to see a little bit of a taste of some fall weather? Alrighty, and here is Thursday, September 14th, and it looks like most areas around Central Florida will start to see things dry out, but there's a slim chance that a few showers, coastal showers that is, may start to uh, pop up in our eastern coastal areas of our coverage area, like from coastal Flagler down into uh, Volusia and Brevard counties, and if that is the case, the rain chances may be ranging from between, we'll say, 20 to 30 percent. Could be, a, could, be, could be a few coastal showers as well over here as well. Uh, along the Gulf Coast of Florida between places like Spring Hill, Tampa, and the St. Pete and Sarasota areas. But again, the chances looks to be extremely low. And then here is the temperature, the temperature map here for next Thursday, and it shows that temperatures will start to really cool things down a little bit. So back to around normal uh, in the upper 80s and into the low 90s, with temperatures looking a bit more cooler than here. Uh, with uh, temperatures ranging in the upper 70s and into the mid 80s. And again, that's for for our folks that live up north into the Mississippi Valley region. All righty, as we are now entering the land of voodoo country, this takes you to uh, Friday, September 15th. And again, we could see just a few pop up hit or miss showers and storms, but the chances of seeing any rain will stay quite fairly low. Other than that, most other most areas around central Florida and perhaps farther north into the Mississippi Valley will be turning out dry as that uh, week comes to an end, not this week, but the next week. But after a little bit of a break from the extreme heat, it looks like it may unfortunately start to make a comeback 
by the time that day arrives with temperatures increasing back into the low to mid 90s with some spots maybe into the upper 90s. Looks like temperatures up here towards the Mississippi Valley may start to remain around normal in the upper 80s and into the low 90s as the 15th arrives. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. But you know, things could change model wise as we get close. So I'll keep you all posted. Here comes Saturday, September 16th, and it seems that the rain chances may start to increase just a little bit, but mostly staying around normal at uh, 30 to 40 percent. So we'll have to wait and see what may end up what may what could end up happening. So uh, the, thus far, weather wise up north, you go into the Mississippi Valley and even for the panhandle side of our state, it looks like we'll still be remaining dry. Well, well, they will. Well, they will. Be, well, they will still be remaining remaining dry is what I should say uh, up in this region up here. And with that, we're talking about temperatures once again ranging between the low to mid 90s heading into the 16th. And that may also be the case, uh, too, if you go up here to the northwest around most areas of, of Alabama and Mississippi with temperatures around Georgia and the Carolinas region ranging in the upper 80s and into the low 90s. And it looks like our rain chances as we head into the 17th of, this, of September may start to uh, increase a bit more. So probably at around 50% we'll call for now. Uh, but again, it's uh, still quite too early to say at this time. So this is why things can still change for sure as we get closer. And with that, it looks like we'll see temperatures get back to around close to normal in the upper 80s and into the low 90s, thanks to some better rain chances we could end up seeing by the 17th of this month. Looks like temperatures up here in the Mississippi Valley region may end up uh, or may or may end up getting into the mid to perhaps upper 90s, especially from the southwest corner of Alabama and into southern Mississippi and farther down to the southwest is Louisiana. But again, it's nearly two weeks out. So remember that could all change as we get closer. And as more moisture continues to uh, build up from the Gulf and perhaps around towards the Caribbean islands, it looks like we'll continue to see more average chances for showers and storms by the time we head towards Monday, September 18th. Again, mostly just between 40 to 50% we'll say for now, leaving most of the Mississippi Valley region uh, remaining rain free at the moment. Temperatures looks to be mostly just around normal. If that is the case, as we head towards the 18th of this month with uh, numbers ranging from the upper 80s and into the low 90s with some middle 90s uh, up here to the far northwest around the southwest corner of Alabama. And perhaps into a uh, central and southern Mississippi and for portions of Louisiana. All right, and here is two weeks from tomorrow, going to be for Tuesday, September 19th, and it seems that the rain chances may continue to end up going up, uh, especially if we go over here towards the eastern side of the peninsula region of Florida and farther down south towards the Keys. So we'll have to wait and see. And with that, it looks like we could end up seeing temperatures drop uh, below 90 degrees once the 19th arrives with the uh, uh, with mostly temperatures ranging between the mid to upper 80s. So any 90s that does end up happening on that day remains farther up north into the Mississippi Valley region. And then last but not least, the GFS trend ends to Wednesday, September 20th, and it looks like more moisture continues to build in from the Gulf, and that, again, could really really fire up those high rain chances right here across the states. So we'll have to wait and see. And again, the only spot that will be dry will be up here just to the north in the Mississippi Valley. And then temperatures, look at the temperatures as we head towards the 20th. This shows that we may start to see uh, probably a little bit of a taste of fall, but mostly has to do with the high rain chances. And if this is the case, we could end up seeing temperatures only getting into the 70s and into the low 80s instead of 90s, just like what the Mississippi Valley region could end up being stuck in by that day. But remember, 
it's two weeks out and remember things model wise could all change for sure as we get closer. Let's see, we got uh, Nancy Land in the house tonight. Good evening to you. So uh, what I'm gonna do right now is go ahead and sign out of Facebook Live on this uh, Labor Day Monday evening. So uh, I expect to have the next live update tomorrow night, same time as always, which is at 8 p.m. And I will continue once again by posting more notes and updates on my blog and social media platforms 24 seven. In the meantime, Enjoy the rest of your evening and, re and remember to continue to stay safe by taking care of yourselves and each other and God bless.